Okay, and welcome back. Uh, we're going to go to somewhere over there in Southeast Asia and talk to our colleague uh, Yoshi this hour about uh, many things. We uh, cover a lot of areas here. What we do know is that uh, Fukushima Daiichi continues to pollute and destroy what's left of the North Pacific Ocean and continues to engender an ever-expanding extinction event all over the Northern Hemisphere, all the way around the world. It's not going to quit. It's going to go on for hundreds and hundreds of years until and unless technology and science, if we're around long enough to actually accomplish anything, comes along and is able to transmute radioactivity into harmless substances. That's the only hope that uh, there can be. But how do you deactivate a radioactive ocean? <laughs> good luck. Yoshi, welcome back. Well, thank you. Yeah, somewhere is a good description because I don't want to be anywhere because uh, there seems to be a hyperactive... Uh, I don't know how to describe it. You're being followed. You know, uh, if, you, if you see the Born series, you know, the Born yeah. Legacy, Born Identity, you understand hyperactivity of these people, this sort of uh, enthusiasm. It's uh, an American-style jihadism, okay? Yeah. And uh, it synergizes with that uh, Islamic jihadism. In fact, they're, they're actually twins, you know, connected at the hip. You know, yeah, I mean, they, yeah. They, they, they synergize with each other. They built with each other. They live on Saudi money. They work through the State Department and the American and, and uh, Arab and Pakistani intelligence. They, Saudi, they uh, interesting but, comment. Uh, Saudi money may be about gone. Uh, apparently, they've frittered away a hell of a lot of their stash yeah. on this uh, genocidal war against the uh, Yemen peoples. I mean, yeah, well... Uh, they, they, that's cash in hand, but, you know, they have vast assets, treasury holders. Well, Aramco, you know, I mean, what's Aramco that's, worth? That's, that's, a, a trillion dollars? Yeah, exactly. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah Aramco, uh, they have investments in all the major oil companies, you know, Exxon, Mobil, you know, Chevron, sure. so on, and they have uh, holdings in all the U.S. major banks, Wall Street, uh, London. Uh, they're quite well off, you know, they're quite well off, and... Uh, you know, one of the odd things about the whole thing, you don't know where the Arab money ends and the Jewish money begins in Wall Street. You know, it's sort of, again, twins joined at the hip, right? They oh, I couldn't agree more. Up. You you nailed all it, sure. All the rhetoric about how they don't like each other and all that. Amazing how much they're in bed together. So, yeah, uh, amazing situation. And I always say these things because, you know, I reported, I was the first, I was the last foreign journalist in a Pakistan Afghan border area right before 9 uh, 11 and right after I was the first one in, okay, doing some work for the Japanese press and uh, small outfit in San Francisco, uh, press in Hong Kong and so on. I had, you know, it was, it was streaming for a lot no, of people. It took a lot of ago. guts to do that. Yeah, but that's exactly when this fellow from New Jersey who's been disturbing Chelsea, New York, and, you know, mm. uh, Seaside Park over there in Jersey, mm. he was. Uh, in Quetta, Afghanistan in 2011, okay? And so, you know, I'm very familiar with what's happening. And he was uh, born in, uh, he was born in uh, Pakistan, well, he, Afghan border. He's Pashtun. He's a Pashtun. Yeah. No, wait, wait, wait. I thought he was an anchor baby. He's definitely Pashtun? Okay. He's Pashtun. Yeah, yeah. He's Pashtun. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's in uh, uh, Quetta, Pakistan, 2011. Very, uh -huh. very unusual timing because at the time... Uh, you know, um, uh, you know, th th this is the time when there's a lot of, you know, interest in trying to turn over a new lease in Afghanistan, you know, the American withdrawal and all that. Yeah. Very, very interesting. But his, he was uh, born in uh, Pakistan, but he came over at nine years old. So I put him into the United States in 1996, 97. And this is when the Bill Clinton State Department uh, this is well known. It's on record. Ahmed Rashid wrote a book called uh, "Oil, uh, Afghanistan, and the Taliban," and the connection between mm -hmm. the State Department and the Taliban. Bill Clinton was an eager supporter of the Taliban. Uh, uh, he worked with Benazir Bhutto's wife, okay, uh, husband, Benazir Bhutto's husband, in building the Taliban, providing arms, money, weapons, with the hopes of getting a pipeline, a gas pipeline from Turkmenistan down to India. That was a big project. So in 
So, and he cooperated very much with the Saudis back then, in uh, from 1995 to 97. Okay, and then you remember those Kenyan and Tanzanian embassy bombing that sort of disrupted things. And then Bin Laden happened to be in Afghanistan quietly then, and then uh, uh, Clinton fired some cruise missiles in there. So this family, the uh, Rahuni family, comes over to New Jersey at time at that time, along with the Karzai family. You know, Hamid Karzai, who became the president of Pakistan. Well, what a coincidence, uh, huh? Uh, Afghanistan, excuse me, Afghanistan. They also have a big restaurant. Uh, Karzai brothers own a restaurant in New York. You know. Alleged big drug smuggling hub, you know, but and so the State Department, he was there all in with the state. So the state, the Clinton, Bill Clinton's State Department brought all those Afghans over during his administration using a lot of Saudi money, okay, because the Taliban were more pro Saudi than the other groups there, okay, than the uh, Kashi groups and newspapers. So basically, this this is a product of the Clinton foreign policy, not just Hillary's foreign policy, Secretary C. This is a policy of her husband, Bill Clinton. Yeah, you know, these these people go back. Oh, no, people Clinton forget. People. Good point. Wow. <laughs> he's, a, he's a Clinton uh, uh, refugee or immigrant. Yeah. I don't know what you call it. Recruit. Yeah. You, you see what I'm saying? Sure. Yeah. So this is <laughs> where they're coming from, and his sense of disappointment. You know, going back to Afghanistan, feeling disappointed after all the long wars, the war still dragging sure, on. Sure, sure, sure. All the promises made by Clinton, Bush, Obama, you know, to help the Afghan people and all that. And the war is still dragging on. People still being killed with drone strikes and all that. The guy comes back and uh, gets to be known as Mad Rahuni. You know, in other words, he's, they consider him a mad. He's, uh, he's, he's angry, okay, when he sets off these bombs. Yeah, he got radicalized. So now... But, but if you understand, he's a Clinton baby. That's why Hillary, Mayor Bill de Blasio, don't dare mention anything about Islam, terrorism, and all that, because he's their baby. You got that? You understand? Bill, Bill de Blasio was a campaign manager for Bill Clinton's re-election. And also, he was the manager of, he ran the campaign for uh, Hillary Clinton's Tennessee. But he's right. a Clintonite all the way. That's right. how he got to be mayor of the city. Mm -hmm. And this is why they're so tight-lipped. This is their, this is their you know, people. I mean, well, that's really operations. a fascinating connect. You can, there's so many dots to connect, and there's another amazing string. Wow. Yeah, which is why the silence, they, 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 you know, one, they, they, they don't dare want to talk about it. They want to forget that this guy or these kind of people yeah. ever existed. Yeah. The well, people he, they created. Yeah, they he, he was radicalized yeah. when he went over there. Yeah, yeah. Well, you see, the the family were radicals in the beginning. The Taliban were radicals, and Clinton said that's wonderful. Yeah, you know, we're, we're still supporting radicals. We're still supporting terrorists. We're still supporting ISIS. We're bombing the Syrian army to give ISIS yeah. an access to exactly a, the point. Uh, exactly the point. They we've always be been on the wrong damn weapons. side. Always. Yeah, we have weapons, satellite photos, training. You know, U.S. military bases. You know, intelligence, an intelligence agency. They're America's children. You know, and then, and then, then, then one day they wake up and say, "Where? What happened to all the promises you gave us? Right? You betrayed us." And then they go berserk and start killing average Americans. You know, for soft target. You know, they they, they, they lose it. So there's an underlying story here. Uh, and then how quickly they were able to find him. Now do you understand why they're so able, they're able to find this guy so fast? He's one of their guys. Too funny. Isn't it amazing? He, how yeah, he was, he was uh, said to be sleeping on in front of a closed bar on the ground yeah. when they found him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, some Taliban guy, he's probably there drinking all night. He <laughs> got caught, kicked out, you know, bum yeah. rushed out of there. So... And then all the first American fried chicken place. So it's just like the Kaiser family. That's the something. name of it, That's too. Not. First American fried chicken, yeah. Yeah, yeah you, know, you get it? If they were such, if they didn't have an American connection there, this great thanks, you know, to the big white father there in Washington, Bill Clinton, why would they call it First American? It, it's their debt of gratitude. We're over here. We work with the Americans. They owe us. They're going to give to us. And then they, one day they find out, well, they're still bombing our, they just bombed my neighbor, they just bombed my cousin. Yeah. 
You, you get the point here. Sure do. You, know, you can't have it both ways. You know, and I think that's what, you know, Donald Trump is trying to point out. You can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't butter your bread on both sides. You got to decide where you stand, where you are, you know. If you're with them, go over there and join a fight. If you're with the USA, stay in the USA and fight. But what you can't do is be indecisive and just gun down innocent people or bomb innocent people on the street. So Bill de Blasio, if you know, I wrote a couple articles about that Trump Tower, the guy who snuck in with the Glock pistol, and I pointed out there was this huge police corruption scandal, you know? And then Police Chief O'Neill is sort of on the fringe of that scandal, okay? The guy who spoke with de Blasio, and pointing out de Blasio was getting money, and, you know, when... when uh, um, Bloomberg and Giuliani were in there. There were no Wall Street banker deaths. As soon as Bill Blasio got in, the Wall Street bankers started dying like flies, okay? All the insiders were dying like flies. A big, something rotten, not in Denmark, but something rotten in New York City. All focuses on de Blasio. And, the man, and he's the man who's supposed to turn New York State for the Clintons. And the Clinton Foundation, of course, is, is in Harlem, is in New York City. So uh -huh. we're seeing sort of the real policy Machiavellianism in that whole Clinton plan there, you know? And it's coming home to roost and uh, with the bombing um, New York of all places in Chelsea. You know? Why Chelsea? Yeah, isn't that that's uh that's pretty strange. What's the name? The, Potter, yeah, what's right? what's in a name? Clinton huh? Bill, Hillary and Chelsea. Clinton Foundation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this Afghan guy saying, what happened, Clinton? You gave us such big promises when I came over as a nine-year-old kid. You know? What happened? Right? To so those big promises. So why Chelsea? It makes all, you know, it's a finger directly to the Clintons for, you know, setting this whole thing up where everyone's killing each other off. A world of terrible disappointment and disillusion. Yeah, you know, it's a big story, right? It's, it's not, you know. Oh, this is a major, a major stuff. story, we're and no one's that. talking about it. Nobody, no, yeah, we, nobody, we, nobody. The enemy, the enemy. Yeah, exactly. We met the enemy, and the many it, enemy are us. Oh, it's us. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, We've yeah, always been. Let, look, let's go back. Hold on. Let's go back yeah. to World War One. We shouldn't have been yeah. in that war. We had no reason absolutely. to go to that war. World yeah. War Two. Well, we had no reason to get involved in that war. 80% of Americans wanted us to stay out of World War II, something like that. Yeah. We had no reason, no, yeah. nobody wanted it. And yeah, FDR so was, lied, betrayed us, Pearl Harbor, yeah. forced us into uh, the European War, yeah. fought the wrong enemy. Yeah. It was all about communism, yeah. socialism, Bolshevism, Marxism. That was the danger on the planet. We were sold a bill of goods. We were, we were conned. We were lied to. And the whole thing, every goddamn war has been wrong, yeah. has been horrible, yeah. has been... Yeah, yeah, we are the great Satan. There's no question. They're yeah. all treacheries. And, and that's not to say you people who fought in the war weren't heroic. Yeah. I'm not saying that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the people who fight the war are trash, and then Wall Street somehow comes away a lot richer. I just the war, did, flushed. Yeah. yeah. It's always the same story, and now we see this little drama going on in New York City where Bill de Blasio isn't even didn't say a single word of sympathy for all the New Yorkers who were Nothing. fighting out of their minds. When no, they, that wasn't you know, his they're, agenda. They're flying <laughs> 200 feet no. in the air, right? You know what I'm saying? And these are elite New Yorkers, right? People in nice little dresses and all that, running with their little Gucci bags you know, down the street, clutching their shopping bags as they're running away from the bomb. Okay? Amazing Right. This is sort of like, you know, they say the first time's a tragedy, the second one's a parody, someone, I think, Frederick Engels, somebody like that. But anyway, no, I think it was Karl Marx himself who said that. You know, 9-11 was a tragedy, and here 15 years later, we have this farce happening in Chelsea, Clintonville, New York. Yeah. It, no it, accidents, folks. The, the, the name was not a coincidence. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's not just one evil guy lurking. This is huh. the system coming down, you know, these are, you know, minions of the system coming down, in, 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 and anyone who worked for the system knows what betrayal by the system means. So this is, anyway, this is a story in New York, this is what, why I was writing about Blasio, corruption, 
uh, you know, the Israeli role all over these sort of things, okay? You know, you know Elizabeth, New York, where this guy is from, that's, that's where um, that second head of uh, Homeland Security uh, was from. What was his name? Uh, uh, Lieberman, you know, big advisor. The guy who created Homeland Security, uh, Joe Lieberman, his big hot show. I forget his name now. Oh, the Chertoff. Chert Chertoff. Yeah, Michael Chertoff. His grandfather and father were the rabbis of, yeah. the, of the Elizabeth, New Jersey uh, synagogues there, big synagogues there. And so in this <laughs> little community, <laughs> lo and behold, suddenly we have a Taliban there. Yeah. yeah. And when I was in you know, Pakistan, the Taliban said, you know, we have nothing against Israel. Unlike the Arabs and all, we have nothing. Because we're the lost tribe of Reuben. We're Jews. Yeah. Does it make any sense now? Does it begin to make sense? Oh, uh, you know, Osama bin Laden from Yemen, where half the families, Arab, you know, Arab family, Muslim families are married in a Jewish family. This whole problem is this sort of weird synergy of you know, Judaism in the Central Asia, Near East, and uh, stuff that the Israelis sometimes, anthropologists, they sometimes hint at this. They talk about Bukharan Jews, you know, legends of the Taliban. You know. Anyway, this is a part, this is a job for anthropologists, not for me, but that's what the Taliban people told me, yeah? We're Jewish. Is that a shocker? Does yeah. that make any sense to you? Yeah, sure it does. I mean, does that make I mean, with a straight face. You know? It's all, it's, it's all, you know? uh, no, it's all uh, pragmatic, uh, sequential, logical. Well, it's not uh, problem. It, it is actually historical. They, 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 yeah. You know, where the sort of, you know, they dress the same, they have the same kind of hairstyle, and, you know, they have similar words, religious rituals, all the same. You know, they're, they call themselves the Lost Tribe, you know, Central Asia out there somewhere. So, we have these strange synergies, and then New York, of course, is a very strange people, uh, city for people who haven't lived there. It's hard to figure it out unless you've been there a while and really get to know the nitty gritty, you know, <laughs> of the various ethnic communities, which I did, you know, when I was there. So, it's, uh, it's an amusing story on one hand, but it is awful bad for people to live in terror like this. You know? New York, and as I said, New York has been hit by this stuff many a time now. It's like getting to be repetitive. You know? Anyway, yeah, so I, you're, no, you're re totally right. See the, the the geopolitics of all this. You have you have a rare grasp of the big picture, rare, and from your world travels from all the people you've known, from your perspective, which is really, is something that is, it's almost unheard of. People just don't get the big picture. They don't. Yeah, they get a they piece of it, yeah. they don't and they really think, realize, no. I don't even think Donald Trump realizes how far embedded the Clintons are in this whole, you know, conflict, you know, the Saudi-Israel right. you know, conflict, how deeply a product of that they are, you know, and uh, it's not well understood. These are international networks it's hard to tell who's who, what a uh, person's background really is. But the Clintons are just a product. Really, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, Trump uses strong language, but it is kind of something very alien to what I would call the American spirit, you know, friendliness, hospitality, openness, all that stuff, democracy, you know, everyone speaking out, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, people calling each other names, racist names. Yeah, you know, it's a it's a rough and tumble democracy, you know, America. Yeah, you know? and uh, it's hard for many people from outside America to understand that. You know how rough and tumble it can be, but how, how in a certain sense fair and just also can come out of that if you're willing to contend. You have the end of struggle. So, so it's very very difficult for the world to understand America, for under America to understand the rest of the world. Well, there's a dichotomy here that very few yeah. people could understand. They can't understand yeah. it. They just yeah. really it's don't get hard. it. Yeah. No, but all, all I can say is, you know, this explains why the Blasio Clinton was just walking on eggshells there, you know? This little Frankenstein guy, mad, Rahini, that's their baby, you know? That's their baby monster there, you know? First American fried chicken. <laughs> How <laughs> funny. A sound, right? Yeah. It, it's astounding, right, what goes on. But anyway, news from Fukushima. Another typhoon, number 16, called uh, Malakas. Hitting, it's, this typhoon is astounding. You know, it's going from Philippines, 
heading straight eastward, northeast this, toward this, China. This, another one's tracking. The, in other words, you're saying it's tracking. It swerves like mm-hmm. it swerves more than ninety degrees. Like it Katrina. More than ninety degrees. Like Katrina. Yeah, it is a big, massive swerve, like a right turn, and then far sharp right turn, uh, and then it hits Sendai nuclear plant. Yeah, floods that area. Then in Shikoku, the Ikata nuclear plant, which was just turned on. You know, we were discussing that, I think, uh, a week or a couple of weeks ago. Turned on early. That's operating. Crosses over there, floods that whole island completely. Right. Okay, it's underwater. And now, it's heading, it's already raining in Fukushima. It's heading right up toward Fukushima. And what's <laughs> really weird is the Japanese weather map. I watch NHK. You know, they put the eye of the storm south of where it should be, not in the center of the storm, because they don't want to admit that it's, this typhoon right. is is it on a dead course, you know, a, a dead center course to three nuclear plants. So there is something there. This is also along that big fault line that I've warned about. The mm-hmm. fault line. Mm-hmm. So, so there is some sort of uh, as soon as they turn these plants on, this typhoon just sort of veered right in, you know, like in a bowling alley to knock out these three pins. So it's uh, the the effects, the geophysical effects of uh, uh, radioactivity still not 100 percent well understood, and you know people are very having a very hard time with my articles understanding what I'm saying about the Arctic Ocean. Who? What? Uh, all these Yoshi? What? Uh, yeah? What scientists have stepped forward to take the whole issue of Fukushima radiation on and and talk about yeah. it honestly and project it with maps and charts to show people? Yeah. There has not been one evidence of that. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. They're all sold out. They're all sold out. They're all sold out. And, and that's why people wonder, why Why am I attacking Einstein theory of relativity? Well, because all this trouble began with this thing called E equals MC squared, conversion of, of uh, well, it's conversion of energy to matter, but also the conversion of matter to energy. I mean, right. this is the core of uh, smashing the atom. And, you know, I talked to, uh, you know, Einstein stole a lot of his ideas uh, from, uh, relatively from this uh, Italian mathematician called Coriolis, uh, I think from uh, uh, Planck and several other European uh-huh. uh, scientists, Poincaré, uh-huh. but also from Bose, the very famous Indian mathematician. And once I, I had a long train ride with a, a student of Bose, okay, and uh, he's from India, and he said, you know, there are at least a dozen good models of this universe. The Big Bang is just one of them, and it's quite an arbitrary one. And a lot of it depends on the number of uh, dimensions you calculate in. Uh, there is a minimum of six dimensions for any universe to be possible. And the likelihood of relativity, or Einstein's theory of this sort of Big Bang, is one of the more unlikely ones. And it's that's about uh, that's fascinating. Possible. Hold on, hold on. We have to take a break. We'll come right back with uh, yeah. Yoshi. And by the way, uh, Bill de Blasio, in case you, some of you don't know, it is not his real name. Uh, he was born Warren, Warren Wilhelm Jr. That was his real name, <laughs> Warren Wilhelm Jr. He changed that to 1983's Warren de Blasio hyphen Wilhelm. That was his name in 1983, Warren de Blasio hyphen Wilhelm. And then in 19, uh, well, in 2001 it was, not 99, he, he, he changed it to Bill de Blasio. This guy's got, uh, multiple personality weaknesses here at the very least. Weird, who weird, weird. It's all weird. Who is this guy? Yeah, who is yeah, it? Who all is right, hold, hold on. Back in a minute. Okay, and back with Yoshi. Taking a look at uh, a lot of different things here. Um, so Bill de Blasio was not born Bill de Blasio. It's another fake. They're all fakes. All of it. It's all. It's it's as Gerald Salenti said. It's it's the uh, he calls it the presidential reality show. It's really the political reality yeah. show. It's a show. It's all showbiz. Uh, underscored, unfortunately, with grotesque, satanic, evil pedophilia, murder, bribery, blackmail, influence peddling, you name it. You name it. It's a criminal enterprise. Politics in America 
is a criminal enterprise. I'm not saying other countries don't have similar problems, but it is nowhere as egregiously obvious and grotesque as it is here. This is, we take the cake. It's, yeah, I mean, it's in other amazing. countries you have just the open autocratic dictatorships, right? Right. This, they don't, this is no. done under the guise of democracy. Right. And uh, if you want to call these, you know, these, I, I, you know it's hard for me to, uh, you know, I look at uh, news sometimes, you know, uh, about these Hillary rallies. It's hard to me to watch them and believe that they're real, that these people. And then, you know, the great catch is the one you yourself did. You know, after Hillary's little seizure there, that where she claimed was pneumonia, then she bounces back, and you and you notice, and you found with photo research, striking dissimilarities in basic yeah. facial parts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in her, you know, like her nose is obviously of another, and it's a much flatter face from the from the yep. side. You see yep. Yep. that the Hillary, this body double, you call it the body double, right? Is what yep. you call it, a body double. Yeah. This is not. This is not. This is not something so grotesque. I mean, you know, there are foreign leaders who do this all the time. They have body doubles all the time. You know, sometimes six or seven of them. You know, who uh, go out. We there. think there are and several with Hillary, sure. and I. I think that uh, they've been inserting uh, the one who gave the uh, talk in North Carolina last Wednesday. I think they've been inserting this one, or maybe a couple during the year, to get people used to yeah. the differences in, yeah. uh, in appearance. Right. Right, 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 right. But there's there's some the ones the photos you found uh, showed some like especially the nose, you know, clear cut differences. And obviously the one with that more crooked nose looks like she's had a considerable amount of cosmetic surgery. You know, it doesn't look like she reminds me of these Korean women. You know, it's highest rate of cosmetic surgery. Her eyes don't mm-hmm. look real to me. You know, I can you can spot it from a mile away. Oh yeah. Her eyes are yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they find lookalikes. Uh, I, I don't know where they dredge these people up. They do, you know, they are dredged up out of the population. It happens in other countries, you know, body double. You know, so sure. It's not surprising. Cosmetic surgery has gone uh, a long way. Yeah, there's something else. I, I don't know if you saw that story. There's something in her mouth now in the one of the double, the doubles. Yeah. It's in the back yeah. lower right side. It's white. Supposed to look like a yeah. tooth, but it's too big. It's it's yeah. something. It could be a... It's some sort of micro. It could be a microphone to change the voice modulation, the tone, the pitch, or it could be a receiver which goes up the neural pathways into her brain. You know, the bone resonates, yeah. and she can hear yeah. somebody yeah. talking to yeah. her with that, so she doesn't have to wear the right. earpiece and get busted with that. Yeah, yeah, she just uh, just parrots out the lines there for it, you know, and then uh, the that's coach right. will tell her, that's like, right. say a little slower, a little more, a little higher pitch in your voice. Uh, to pronounce it this way, yeah, because her pronunciation sort of goes from a southern Arkansas draw to more of a harder midwestern. Thing. Exactly. Well, and, I think that's it doesn't, it doesn't it doesn't waver back and forth, you know, because no. no. you know I lived in Indiana <laughs> in the Midwest and California and of course overseas, so I have all these mixtures of uh, accents, but they just sort of like. So it bounce around all over like a pachinko ball all over the place. Whereas these are consistent changes. You know, one sounds like a southerner and the other one sounds like a midwesterner. So yeah. that's very odd. You know, speaking as a person who's you know doesn't have a consistent accent. You know, that that's it's very hard to control those things. So oh, that is very sure very it odd. is. Yeah, there's a, there's uh, a, yeah. we we have to remember yeah. also that the technology of show business yeah. uh, and beyond mm-hmm. that is extraordinary. Yeah. It's so far advanced now, it's not even oh, funny. Sure. Oh, oh, of course. And no, the average absolutely. person does not have a clue. They say, well, they couldn't yeah. do that. Oh, they just don't know. Well, a lot of these rallies, and though, you don't have independent stations coming with cameras. You know, there are like central camera No, it's a pool. Set up, yeah. And yeah. they feed to the networks, right? Yep. So everything can be electronically, um, uh, you know, well, I busted the, did you see me, I, I, I was able to figure out what happened in North Carolina when she comes walking up to the uh, stage from the right, yeah. all yeah. the people in front are holding their, their smartphones up with their screens, you can see all the screens, yeah. and there's a wow. whole row of American flags, red, white, and blue, big yeah. color, not yeah. one yeah. camera has the red, white, and blue flag in it. Not one camera has the same color background wall. 
Yeah. Those people, yeah. that whole four audience in the foreground That's was right. was That's dropped right. in there. The pre all pre programmed photos in there. They were they were they were, they were that the audience show. came from another appearance somewhere else yeah. and it was dropped Rehearsal. into that it's video. No, it comes from a dress rehearsal, you see. And then sometimes there's sudden changes by the local sponsors. So that's what yeah. happened. It's a dress rehearsal that they have. Well, whatever it was, they were not imaging the uh, actual scene we were yeah. watching. They were yeah. dropped in there. Now, this is the Matrix all the way. I mean, this is the Matrix. Oh, yeah. This, and, and this is not just the Clinton Foundation. Like I say, you know, uh, there was this operation. Uh, in uh, When this fellow was coming across as a child, his family was coming across as the bomber in New York, uh, there was Operation Alex Station going on where they were going to use Afghans to kidnap Osama bin Laden, put him on a C-130, and smuggle him out of the country. You know? So Clinton wanted to reel him in. Now, they didn't just want to kill him, and those missiles deliberately missed the place because he's an asset. Bin Laden was an asset, just like all these other people. Yeah. So, yeah, so all of this stuff is stage media. And, you know, it was interesting when I was in uh, Pakistan, right at the beginning of the American intervention after, uh, uh, in 2001, right after the 9-11 uh, incident, I was the first in there. Uh -huh. You know, CNN, they stayed at the, you know, the five-star Rose Hotel in Peshawar, you know, um, where the Taliban were giving interviews. And NBC was there, and then BBC. They were giving out like ten thousand dollars in cash to Afghan families for photos, uh, any kind of memorabilia, old tapes, you know, cassette tapes, and all that. They were grabbing information and all that. So, you know, CNN. We see, you know, again, this is not something new, but with Hillary, this goes back right back to the support for the Taliban, and then finally the rupture the attempt to woo the Taliban before the bombings became, uh, began in 2011. So this is like within the family, all in the family type stuff. So this is what Americans got to see. That's why this case is not going to be handled very well in court in New York. You know? And this is why they're downplaying these you know, injuries. You know, they're yeah, gonna what what to is that? 29 in people injured. We don't hear about minimal. the extent of it. One person was supposed to be seriously yeah. hurt. What is that? Yeah, and then we hear it later, maybe there were 45, I mean, I mean you know, the numbers are not clear, right, you know, what the injuries right. were, where they were treated, who they are. None of, in other words, we privilege this guy, this uh, uh, family, the Taliban family, over, you know, 29 Americans, or maybe there's 20 Americans there on the street. You know, I mean, American citizens are treated like dirt now, they're hunted down overseas, I mean, you know, they're taxed to death, they're, you know. Uh, regulated to death everywhere. You know, American citizens are punished if you're native born. Uh, the newcomers who serve the intelligence agencies in the State Department, you know, they're, they're, they're basically given immunity. I mean, this guy was shot right, a couple times. He looked so bad, did he? No, he looked pretty good. He shot in the leg, whatever that means. Maybe it was a yeah, John he Wayne. Shot, he shot a couple of cops. He didn't look like he was shot in the leg. There was no picture of his leg bleeding. No, he had a gash on, on his shoulder. Yeah. He huh? shot a couple of cops and allegedly their vests protected them. So what was he using? A twenty yeah, two? Yeah. yeah, exactly the point I'm saying. The thing looks like a total fake. It was inside they staged this thing. They hauled him away and he's essentially got immunity one way or the other. He ain't gonna take any punishment. You know, this is uh as far as a a bomb goes, Yoshi, if this was a yeah. real serious terror op they would have packed a car full of explosives and lit it off exactly. on the street. Exactly. Killed dozens exactly. and dozens of people. This is some. This is a PR stunt. Well, it it is and it isn't. It's a warning shot from the guys who are paying the Clinton. Yeah. You know? I guess. All right, a PR a warning story. shot. Whatever. Okay, fine. The Pakistanis. You know this guy Kirzir Khan. Remember him? Oh Played yeah, of course. The, the con man. Don't forget the con man. Yeah, I mean, Wayne Manson did the whole job on him, linked yeah. to Pakistan Intelligence Service during the war on terror, you know, Pakistan Intelligence all the way. Uh, the head of Pakistan Intelligence came out to Arlington Cemetery. This is the guy who creates the Taliban, okay? He's out at the Arlington Cemetery, you know, to give a eulogy for this guy, you know? These are, these are supposedly the enemies America's fighting over there, you know, in Afghanistan. You know, the chief of them, 
the general is over in Arlington Cemetery for this brave captain, you know, who's financing a militia, which ends up being the ISIS, you know? Then, uh, so, you know, these, these connections, the interconnections of the diplomatic corps, the intelligence agencies, mm -hmm. with all these other bad guys, so intrinsic, so so built in, and then the losers, and Trump is right, who are the victims, right? Who are the victims? In Minnesota, why are there so many Somalis? That was another Clinton thing, remember? Black Hawk Down? Oh, remember yeah. the invasion of oh, Somalia? Yeah. The Marines yeah. were yeah. on the yeah. beach, yeah. and the cameras were there earlier, European camera crews were there earlier, videotaping like a bunch of turtles. What a in. coincidence. It is, a, is it amazing how the Clintons are so... So this is not an occasional donation to the Clinton Foundation. They, they, they are the minion of this block, the petrol dollar block. Mm -hmm. you know, they're part of the petrol dollar block, which intends to control the United States and keep it a captive nation. Yeah? That's right. So, well, we can't have so that. Be very look, clear. This is, yeah. look, Donald Trump, I hope, will declare this nation uh, its own isolationist-oriented uh, enterprise for its people, its heritage, its citizenship, yeah. and yeah. its values. And I ho he well, can that, do yeah. it if he if he lives. Well, yeah, hopefully it'll be a beginning of a revival of human democracy, finally dealing with this Wall Street. It could be. Make sure. America great again. Okay. Yeah. Hey, look, yeah. America was, hopefully. a lot of people say America was never great. Fine. That's okay. America always had people that have nots. Every society does. Every nation does. It's just part and parcel of the way humanity organizes itself. No big surprise. All right? But on, on balance, 125 years ago, Ellis Island, we yeah. were the light to the world. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was a different time, different place. That's right. Different kind of immigrant. Yeah, that was a whole different ball game, you know? all the way up to the boat people from Vietnam who fought on America's side. And by the now, way, all of those, uh, the Vietnamese uh, and Cambodia, whoever came over here from Southeast Asia, on yeah, average... They were on America's side, really. Yeah, I mean, they, oh. were, they were not like these iffy people, you know? Get that, now, get this America. one, Yoshi. You already know this, but let me tell our listeners. On average, within yeah. one year of their arrival, yeah. the so-called boat yeah. people, the Vietnamese, yeah. all who were yeah. brought over here were self-supporting. Yeah, they work hard. Uh, they make very vibrant communities, and, uh, you know, they, they do the best they can. They have the problem just like the Italians did. You know, there's organized crime and all that, but that's part also the immigrant community. part of the self-help uh, thing, you know. But, you know, they have high, uh, they have a lot of uh, top college graduates serving the military and all. So, so, you know, basically these are people who are aboard. They, they, you know, they, they, they try to be an American, and, they, you know, it may not always be successful. But there's no doubt that they try, okay? But uh, I don't know, man. This guy goes back to Afghanistan three times and then comes back and does his bombing. That's just like unneighborly, man. It just doesn't, you know, the welcome wagon rolls out for you <laughs> and then you go bomb it. That, that's ridiculous. Come on. Yeah. You know, this is ridiculous. Anyway, let's, let's get a little bit back to Fukushima stuff. Right. Another news tidbit, new, another news that yeah, the wall, of course, the frozen wall is gone. It's been raining there before the storm, a big, long fight. Now the third typhoon is hitting dead center. We're going to drop, you know, a bunch of rain uh, on top of Fukushima again. So the ice wall is basically gone. A lot of radiation. Now, and, I, and as I said about the effects on the Arctic region, a really sad thing is happening in Nor Norway where all those deer suddenly collapsed from, I say it was gamma rays. Some people can test me. They can't come up with another answer. You know, cosmic rays, uh -huh. sort of like directing gamma rays back down to Earth and killing all those uh, deer, you yep. know, in, in yep. Norway. Yep. The Norwegian government has decided open hunting season to kill, to hunt down 70% of the Arctic wolf population in Norway. And what's the deal with that? The obvious deal. Wolves are predators. The government must know radiation is building up in the wolves. And they're afraid of mutation. Uh, they're afraid of increasing yeah. viciousness, right? These are in wolf preserves. But, you know, as I said, radiation... So the wolves that come after uh, human beings is what you're saying, though. The radiation anything, will... Yeah, anything where yeah, maybe yeah. tear each other apart, attack sheep. They say they're attacking sheep. So they're yeah. attacking sheep. Yeah. Obviously not one or two. They're just ripping them down. Just like the sharks attacking the seals off the and coast people. of Southern California. Yeah. Yeah. 
it's, it's just it's just it's just like random killing because their their brain system, their nervous system, their sensory systems are being destroyed, are just going wild with radiation. So they're going to knock out most of that herd. I mean, most of that pack, that wolf pack in Norway. This is like this ongoing tragedy. Well, you know, when, when a government's like a Norwegian government, what do they have to lose by saying, you know, Fukushima is the cause? You know, other reactors around the area are also contributing, other, you know, uranium, you know, but radiation is at the heart of this crisis that's killing off the wildlife of the north and also for killing off a lot of domestic animals. The sheep would be weaker, of course, unable to run. Uh, the sheep dogs may have a problem fighting against the wolves, right? They're yeah. disoriented all. Yeah. Right? You see what I'm saying? Maybe even the killings are done by the sheep dogs. They're under so much radioactive stress. This is, you know, while we're worrying about, you know, these uh, pressure cooker bombs in Boston and New York, all of life is dying just a few, you know, 100 miles north. Huh? Uh, you know, everything is dying off. Uh, the world is dying. You know, the, the, the entire biological system is collapsing. It's imploding. And no one dares talk about what's going on. And why else would you have this open season against the world? That's a and very uh, uh, important... I, I saw the story and I, I just didn't connect it. But you're right. Yeah, it has to. Yeah, they're feeding yeah, on irradiated animals, and they're going to start to go yeah. nuts. Yeah, they go nuts, and so they just rip, you know, the, a piece of fur off a, a sheep or just slash its throat and then run on and attack another one, just random, you know, and say they're going crazy, you yeah? know. It's wow. not their fault. No. It's not their fault. Well, 75% yeah. will be gone soon, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, this is really accelerating the Arctic. You know, and you ran story is not melting. That's correct. Uh, as I said, it's fragmenting. It's not melting. Yeah, you know? as I said, tritium is fragmented. Everything. Mm -hmm. You know, it's mm -hmm. not melting. I said, you know, there's ice down there. It's all just cr you know crumbled like ice cubes in the bits. You know, so it's not melting. It's cold up there, but uh, cosmic mm -hmm. radiation pouring in and this disaster. Just a matter of time before we just see like a group of uh, kids, school kids or something, just dead, and they'll cover that up. Those are just a range of bus accidents or something like that. You know, the governments are desperate. They won't tell the truth of what's really going on, that the whole northern tier of nations is being destroyed. Wow. You know, we haven't gotten... It's, it's for. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We haven't gotten one good report. And I'll bet it's been two, two and a half years on the structural residue that was Fukushima Daiichi. The, those 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 wow. structures have got to be just de decaying, rusting, listing, leaning. Yeah. It's only a matter of time before one, number one or two or three takes a, a dive and throws its uh, spent fuel pool on the ground. Yeah, well, yeah, again, these water surges removes gravel, destabilizes uh, the gravel underneath the plant. And then when it dries up, it all becomes destabilized. They're sitting on pockets of air. And the ground itself, like this, the recent rain since mid-August, have just uh -huh. uh, filled the gravel below with water, so high radioactivity is surging to the surface, and the puddles, the workers can't get near the plant. But seriously, how long can those buildings, Yoshi, last? They, they've been well, through they've hell. Been yeah, a lot of the fire damages. They, they have been rusting, uh, and then radio, radioactivity really pits. Yeah, I wrote a whole story on steel. On the yeah, wall. yeah, yeah. It was excellent. Yeah, and, yeah, I'm a steel, I was a steel worker. Yeah, Look I, at I, it I, in I, the uh, Yoshi's box on the left-hand side. He wrote a definitive paper about steel. It's fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, and then, yeah, I mean, I'm into steel from the myth, mythos of steel from the ancient past. It's a center, yeah. Without steel, there'd be no civilization. The Bronze Age wasn't much. It was the Iron Age that brought about the great civilization. They all rose by learning mastery of craft, of steel, and perfecting it. And then they all declined when they abused yeah. the steel that they had by going out murdering people, mur killing each other and all that. You know, so right. steel is very part of that cycle. And right now, the steel, the structural steel in Fukushima is just... You know, is bent. A lot is tangled and bent. Well, they call it annealing, don't they? Annealing. 
Well, no, annealing annealing is the heating of steel to recrystallize it. Basically, uh, remove the crystal structure by healing uh, by by heating, and uh-huh. then that heating at a certain temperature and allowing to cool at a certain rate, the steel will crystallize in ways that you want. It'll restructure. I and they see. Anneal okay. And See, the, the problem is what I suspect is the, for, for something like uh, two decades, right, they've been faking their reports on nuclear parts, including reactors. You know, the, the part they're not talking about is a big reactor, yeah. Yeah. where there's concentrations of carbon, so the steel is very brittle. And my suspicion is, you know, because we used to do this in a steel mill. We would sometimes anneal a part on our own. Huh. We get out there with hook to a gas blow. I mean, you have no idea. Your 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 idea of all oh, this is highly technical and all that's a picture these companies give. But in the middle of the night, after the midnight shift, you know, three in the morning, we're out there with uh, <laughs> burning torches, healing up parts of the red hot to anneal them, you know, yeah. so they don't crack anymore, you know, to try to rebuild the crystal structure. Of course, that makes it weaker. You know, as a whole, it gets weaker. The 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 damaged brittle part. Uh, we more or less uh, may able to stop the cracking, but in the end, you know, the reheating of that steel like that's making the entire structure much weaker. I suspect all this kind of stuff is going on inside like yeah. the plant. Crazy, crazy. Components, components plant. There's a lot of fudging that's been going on, and then the British government, under a lot of pressure, has agreed to restart Hinkley Power Point project. Although it still has a lot of hurdles to go. Yeah, and all these parts that they found in you know 400 different parts for nuclear plants in critical areas, high pressure areas, bad steel. They haven't been able to fix it for 20 years. They find bad parts, so it's in the. I say this is in the production process itself, in the steel making itself. They haven't solved this thing. This is terrible. And when a plant like Fukushima goes down, all these flaws are just going to break. I mean, under the under rust, under pressure. Well, well, Very we'll spring. see. It's a day-to-day thing. We just hear yeah. nothing anymore, right, and that right, really right. bothers me. Steel nothing. rust. You know, yeah. It does rust. It's, and it's, it's not uh, stainless steel there. I understand very little stainless steel because uh, it's too brittle. It's that's just right. your ordinary steel that's rusting. No way you get in to paint it. You have to put grease on all these things, and oil, and paint, huh. you know, to keep it from rusting. No one's getting in there. Everything is decaying in that time. Right. Time before. One last little straw, steel straw breaks, and boom. That's it. That's how close we are. Yoshi, thanks. Uh, thanks very much, as always. Talk to you next week. We'll keep in touch. Yep. The situation over yep. here is now heading into the home stretch. 49 days, I guess, until the so called vote. Yeah. Uh, we'll see what happens. It's it's looking. Well, I got to get the petrol dollar mafia the heck out of there. I mean, you know, I mean, they're killing, you know, I mean, they're, 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 they're terrorists that they created are, kill, are back yeah. home in America. Killing people. So that's got, that's not intolerable. That can't continue. You can't. That's right. You can't that's have right. names like that. There's no way you can, and which is why the people in the neighborhood there were, right, uh, filed a complaint mm-hmm. against First American Chicken. They said, you know, we don't like me, all these sort of dodgy guys coming over, you know, no. and all that, yeah. and out there all night, right? Our girls are on the street, and we don't know what they're up to. Yeah. They're coming in from all over. Yeah. Area. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay, get right. some rest. Thank you. Have a nice day. Take right. care. Talk soon. All right. All right. Okay. Uh, Yoichi Shimatsu, our, uh, our man for all seasons. All right. Back tomorrow night. It's crazy out there. We'll do our best to continue to inform you, and you know where we'll be. Talk to you tomorrow night.